Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells. I'm a senior 3D artist. In this quick little tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at lights in 3D Studio Max. We're then going to use what we go over quickly to set up a three-point light system for a character. Okay? This is our scene. It's just from above. It's just a box. Here's our left view. Here's our front view. It's just a box, but I, I wanted something really simple so you guys get an idea of what we're dealing with. If we go to our Create tab, we have several different things. We have the geometry. We have shapes, which are splines. We have lights, cameras, helpers, space warps, and systems. Obviously, we want lights. Now, when you click on the lights, the default is photometric. We're not going to be messing with anything photometric in, in this particular quick intro. We're going to be looking at just the standard. And so I'm just going to click on the uh, little tab here and click Standard. Okay, just to get an idea of what it is, uh, these are the different lights we can use. Now, MR relates to mental ray. We're not going to do any mental ray stuff, so let's, we're just going to avoid those bottom two. We're just going to look at the rest of these. The target spot is like a sunlight spotlight. We're not going to deal with that. We are going to deal with a target direct. A target direct will do something like this. Let me go ahead and actually, let's do it this way. We're just going to click and drag it. And in our left view, we're going to move it up. And if we do, we can grab our little... Uh, a little handler on this right there. Oh, if you can't can't select it, it's fine. Just grab the target via our what is basically an outliner in Maya, but in, in Max it was a different uh, setting. So as you can see, this is a target direction. This is from the top. So let me just apply it, and let's go ahead and do just a very quick render. I'm going to click this little teapot. As you can see, boom, it doesn't do a whole lot. It's like it's a target directional and it's there's not a whole lot of forgiveness with that. If you see with this particular directional light, it has this cone. This this is the the uh, realm of influence, if you will. So we need to modify this. To modify this, we go to our little looks like a little rainbow. It's the next tab, it's our modify tab. First, we'll make sure that, if, well, at least when we're rendering, we want to make sure we have our shadows on. But let's go for intensity, color, and attenuation. Intensity and color, it's multiplier. It's one right now. It's just default, and it's white. I'm okay with that right now. For the directional parameters, here we go. We need to be able to see our cone of light so we can see what it looks like. So we're going to hit show cone. That just merely makes sure it's going to stay there. And I'm going to reselect the light. And let's go ahead and we have a couple of things. We have the hot spot, which is what we've seen. It's this tight little spot here. And we have the fall off. That's the outer rim area. Again, if we do a quick render, that's all we're getting. Let's go ahead and adjust the fall off. Let's go ahead and scale that fall off up. Now, as you see, as I scale that fall off up, you can see how it, it changed. This We have a whole big area now that is, has grown around this. I'm going to hit G to hide the grids just so you guys can see this a little bit easier. We just changed a whole lot here by by scaling this fall off up. Now we can scale it down as well, but you see in this front view, you can see how it's affecting this. You see how it's scaling up and we're not having a tight little light on it. So if I click this again and we do a little quick render view, there you go. You see how we've just changed that. We no longer get a hot spot that's delineated by a very sharp line. We now have faded out the edges, which is what we want to be able to do. All right. So now that's that's our directional light. Okay. That is our directional light. Uh, we're going to go now take a look at our omni light. Here's an omni. If I just click in it, I click right down in the middle of it. You can see basically right off the bat, it's just basically throwing light in all directions. All right. I'm going to go ahead and move this up. Let's just move it X and Y, and I'll move it a little bit over. Now, as you can see, it's affecting all the lighting in this area. I'm going to go ahead and check. Well, let's go for modify, and let's check to make sure we have our shadows on, which we do. 
Let's go ahead and just do a quick render. There you go. Now an Omni is, is basically, it's it's that. It's it's the light is just cast in, in all directions at all one thing. But you end up getting a really nice sense of what's going on with this particular scene by using an Omni. And again, we're going to use an Omni for a lot of different things. And, and I tend to actually use a lot of Omnis when I'm lighting characters as well. All right, so we've got an Omni. So that's, again, basically it's in all directions. Let's take a quick look at a target spot, a target spotlight. I'm just going to click and I'm going to drag. Okay. And let's just go ahead and angle this up a little bit. And we're going to angle this over. Okay, let's just take a quick gander at what that does. Let's go ahead and go to our modify. Again, you always have to make sure the shadows are on, just so you've, you've got them. Let's see what this does. Okay, now as you can see, what it's doing is there's some bouncing of light going on. Um, it is a spotlight, so we're getting a harder edge, but it's also bouncing some light, and you have some of this, some of this stuff up in here. Obviously, it's a box. It's not necessarily the best thing to be working with to illustrate the purposes, but I am trying to get across what you, you know, some of the effects that the lights are going to have and some of the ones that are better to be used. Uh, I, I use target lights, uh, the spotlight sometimes. I tend to use, mostly use the Omni lights. I use the target direct, and then occasionally I'll use a skylight. A skylight gives a flat an, uh, ambient color. So let me show you this, this skylight. If I turn the skylight on, Okay, I'm going to go do cast shadows. I'm just going to click like dead in the center. That's the skylight. That's it's basically a half dome. If I go ahead and do a quick render, and it's chugging. Hold on. So you can see this is going to give you. It's it's kind of just a basic, basic, basic ambient light. It's a generic ambient. As you can see. You can see the edges of the box very well. There's some shadowing going on, etc. And that's just by putting a single Omni in there. So it's not a bad thing. Uh, I like to use Skylight a lot of times uh, for a lot of different things. I don't think we're going to use a, a Skylight for, for doing the character lighting. Uh, we, we might add one in, might not. I don't know. We'll play with it. But this is the Skylight. This, this is basically giving you, right off the bat, before you add in any of your own personal lighting, this would give you a really nice ambient occlusion, basic generic kind of light right off the bat. Can be a, a really, really useful and really handy. Uh, I, I, I use, I, like I said, I generally have one of those in my scenes. If I don't have one of the, those in my scenes, I definitely have a target direct to, to imitate kind of a, a sunlight at the very least. Okay. Okay, I want to again delete that. The free spot it's basically it's a spotlight, but instead of having a target, you know, when I did the spotlight, uh, when I when I do a target spot, you have to click. That's my origin point. That's my camera, and I have to click and drag to where my target is going to be. That's a target spot. A free spot. Make sure you're in whatever view you want to go from, like say for the front, and I just click and I leave it alone. So you can see it creates a cone of light right off the bat. And it makes it so it's it's semi it's one directional only. It's one directional one plane. It was based on whatever I, I stuck in this area. Let's go ahead and do a quick render on that. And this is one of those that's likely going to take a little bit because it, it's reading the the information a little bit differently. Okay, so as you can see, it's reading it. I don't know. I don't. I don't this it it really flashed a lot of a lot of um light here but no reflective light whatsoever it should have technically done something like that i would at least i would have hoped for something like that let me tr let me turn these shadows on just to see if that made much of a difference oh i'm sorry so there it went okay there was your bounce lights on the targets but but the thing is that with the free spot it's a free target light without having a a an actual target you're just sticking in the scene okay all right, it's that's that's just the quickie. All right, let's go ahead and open up an actual uh, character. All right, so this is a character we're going to look to create some lighting for. Uh, it's a wrestler type of bad guy. Used was, model I created wasn't used, so that's fine. Anyway, this is just the quick uh, view of what the model looks like. 
It has normal maps. It has a very light spec map, but I, I was actually toned the spec map down a little bit just to, to illustrate for uh, this this particular tutorial. So, all right, so this is the character. It's got a normal map, etc. It's just simple, but this is this is no lighting in the scene whatsoever. All right. Let's go ahead and go to our, our top view. We're going to go to our create, and in this case, let's go for a target direct. Okay. So again, we're going to click our, our origin point and then click on the model. Now, because we adjusted, because we adjusted uh, the parameters of this particular light last time, Max will remember what you what you did on the last one, which is really great, which means all I have to do is I can just click and drag this up. I can click the target area and move it up a little bit. And right off the bat, I should be able to get a really nice, let's make sure we turn on our, our shadows too. But we should get a really nice render right off the bat. Okay, so there you go. All right, a nice directional light, just like sunlight would be. All right. I'm going to leave that one alone. I'm not even going to touch that right now. We can modify it in a second. Let's go to our Omni light. Now this this is this is our first light. Okay, this is the main light. We're going to now create the fill light. You know, in a three point in a three point lighting system, you have you know that we have main light, you know the source of light. You have the fill light, which is you know a little bit of an ambient kind of lighting, and then you can do like a, the third light. For like rim lighting and stuff like that, that's what I generally use it for. So let's go ahead and create an Omni, and because the Omni throw lights throws light everywhere, let's make the sure the shadows are on, and I'm just going to click it over in this direction. You can see the model lights up on this side, but now of course it's a default; it's always at the base. So let's go ahead and just pull that up a little bit, and I'm going to pull it over in the front view or the top view. Let's go ahead and modify it really quickly because it's likely going to be bright. Let's go to the in intensity and color. Yeah, it is. Let's turn this down to a 0.7. In fact, let's try and do this a little bit of a pinkish light, help uh, help that flesh tone in a little bit. Let's go ahead and do a quick render. Oh, nice. That kicked it off really well, really well. OK, so we've got our two lights so far. Let's go ahead and add in a third light. We're going to go ahead and use another Omni. I'm going to put it back here. And this one for the Omni, I'm going to, if you go from the left view, I'm just going to pull this up a little bit. I'm also going to modify it. Let's change this up to, say, 2. And I'm going to turn this to a harder blue. But I'll actually amp it up a little bit. All right, let's go for, let's see what that looks like. Oh, see, I'm going to get some nice rim right in there, right in these edges here. Let's go ahead and, again, now this is this is a three-point system. This would work perfectly. I don't think there would be a problem with that. I'm going to go ahead and now squeak a little bit. I'm going to hold my shift down, and I'm just going to click and drag, because this is just basically my, it's kind of like a three-and-a-half light system. I always like adding in a couple different rims. I don't like just a particular rim. I'll have one rim that, that has one color, and I'll use another rim that has a do another color on it. So I'm going to go ahead and change that up a little bit. Actually, I'll pull this towards a red red vein. There we go. Turn the intensity a little bit, and I'm also going to crank this to three. Let's see what that does. Oop, a bit much. That's fine. We're going to crank down I'm not going to crank down the the multiplier I'm going to crank down the fact that this is a uh, so light I want to bring this down a little bit oh, there you go I'll finesse that I'll just move it off this way a little bit I'm also going to make sure oh sh got to make sure shadows are on which means shadows aren't on on this one there we go let's do that quick render Oh yeah, it's pulling a lot of that up a little bit more. Very nice. Okay, I want to go ahead and adjust this one a little bit. I want to crank it a little farther over. I'm going to get a little more bluing into it. There we go. And I want to crank this up to, say, 3. Well, actually, I should bring, bring this down a little bit then. And I'm going to pull the saturation down. Oh yeah, nice. Very nice. I like it. 
So there you have a very quick introduction into some three-point, technically four-point lighting. Uh, but it gives it, it makes your character look really good, gives a little variation to it. I probably could have tweaked it a little bit more to have some of that stand out. But the whole idea is, is that if you have a three-point that you can use or a four-point light that you like, you can actually save it out and keep reusing it on different models and add in a couple extra lights, little key lights here and there where you need to. Uh, keep your main, always keep a main light or your, this is the actual main key light. Use a fill light and then have a backlight for rims, etc. If I'm only going to be taking the shot from this point, this would certainly be acceptable. I think that would look really good. And certainly if you're doing a portfolio piece or, sh you know, needing the character to show off for a game, th this would be absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Um, okay, anyway, I hope you've had fun with this. Very quick intro. My name is Stephen G. Wells. This has been 3dmotive.com. Thanks for watching.